Okay, so if you've ever been on a diet, you'll know what calorie counting is. Um, well, as an off-gridder, we sort of do something called watt counting. Uh, and you think, well, what's that? Well, quite simply, um, you may want to know or estimate how long your deep cycle battery in your RV can last for, the one in your van, the um, solar rig you've got, what to expect to be able to draw from it uh, before it goes flat. And also to know what appliances you can and can't expect to be able to run off your inverter. And um, that's what this is going to be about. Now, quite simply, a lot of people can't tell what they would be able to run and what they can't run, um, yet it's been under the nose the whole life. Go and get an appliance, any electrical appliance uh, that's small enough for you to lift and have a look underneath and you'll see a little plaque. If that little plaque is not underneath, it'll be on the back. Um, sometimes these little plug packs, it's on the back. Other times it's actually on the plug side. Um, but Essentially, every single appliance, I've only seen two appliances that haven't had it, but every single other appliance that you've got, according to electrical standards law, should have this little plaque on it. And the plaque will say something along the lines of 115V, 240V, 250V, something like that. Um, and that'll be your volts. And then it'll say... DC devices won't have this, but AC ones will. It'll say 50 HZ. Some countries it may even say 60 HZ. Um, of course, if you haven't realised already, your 115V is 115 volts, 240V, 240 volts. And your HZ, that's your hertz, that's your sine wave cycles um, per second, um, which is applicable to AC only. And then you'll have something or rather, a small number, A, or a large number, W, or both. Um, and one's, the A stands for amps, and the W stands for watts. Now, if you've seen a bit of my battery tech stuff, um, or you know anything about deep cycles, you know that they come in amp hours. Now... Generally speaking, a amp hour is one amp drawn for one hour. You know, and it may be a case of, um, you know, if you've got 16 amp hours, you can draw uh, four amps for four hours, or 16 amps for one hour, or one amp for 16 hours. Realistically, that isn't exactly correct. Uh, it's more based off of um, how hard you draw. And the higher the currents that you draw, uh, the quicker the battery goes flat, as opposed to drawing the same amount of amp hours, but over a longer period of time, the battery will stay up for longer. Um, It'll go for longer until you hit your, you know, 10 volt, 10 and a half volt um, cutoff point that uh, a lot of inverters have. Uh, basically, <clears throat> if you want to work it all out in amp hours or watts or whatever, um, you're thinking, well, how can I tell how many watts something takes if it's only got the amps listed? Well, this works for both AC and DC. Um, and quite simply, watts divided by volts equals amps. Amps times volts equals watts. And if for some strange reason you can't work out what the volts are, you'll never need to use this equation, hopefully. Um, you might if you're trying to discern if something's 12 volt or 24 volt. Um, especially if you've got something that's designed to be put in a truck. Watts divided by amps equals volts. Uh, we shouldn't need to know that. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, you may see that there are little cutout devices um, that you get for, well, low battery disconnect for 12 volt. And there'll be 24 volt ones out there, not that I've really gone looking that hard for them. Um, and of course, your inverter, your 12 volt slash 24 volt to mains box, also um, has a cutout thing. Now, usually what happens is you'll have, um, you can adjust them, don't touch them, just leave them. Um, some of them you, gotta tell you can adjust, but you know, maybe really open the box up and void the warranty, sort of a, or, you know, not necessarily, but you've got to really know what you're looking at. Uh, and there's no point to do it. Um, you'll have an alarm go off at somewhere like 10.7 volts or 10.5 volts, and the disconnect will pull the plug on you at anything from 10 volts to 10.5 volts. Um, and inverters will do this, and so will your 12 volt. Um, low disconnect box. If you have one, I've never had one. I I just don't be stupid and run it flat. Um, having said that, I've got more panels than I need to use. Uh, it, if you're living in a van with one panel, it may be a real issue, and you may want to look into it. Um, yeah, but a couple of other things. Um, Never expect everything just to run perfect. Uh, if you have a chance to buy a charge controller that says MPPT on it over a charge controller which doesn't, you'll notice it's dearer, but by hell, go buy it. Definitely pick up the MPPT one. That stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking, and I'll explain a lot more about that in uh, charge controller videos. Uh, but you can get 10 to 30% extra power in the batteries out of the same panel and the same light conditions. It is really worth having it, even though they're more expensive. Um, they are really worth having if you're pushing your limits. If you don't have much space on the top of your van to mount panels or things of that nature. Um, yeah, the other one was... Um, oh yeah, when you're looking at your little plug packs, like one of my electric shaver has it, and, and so does the... Um, laptop, it'll have an input voltage and an output voltage, right? Don't worry about the output voltage. What you're worried about, the wattage drill that you're worried about is the input voltage because your inverter will be inputting it to that plug pack before you use your laptop, use your shaver and whatnot. Um, your output voltage is obviously what the plug at the end is. It might be, you know, for your shaver it can be 12 volt for one of mine, another one um, that I'm using now, or not using that much, um, is 15 volt, and, and you'll see it's a little DC, and it'll tell you the amps for it as well, usually. Um, but when you get a plug pack, you're looking at the input volts. Um, when you buy an inverter, you'll have these smarty pants, blooming Chinese cheapo inverters that'll be rated at their surge outputs. You'll also get the occasional very arrogant, smart ass salesperson who will be very happy to tell you the surge output. Ignore the damn surge output. What you're looking for is a continuous output, the continuous draw wattage, the continuous one, which will be a lower number. Realise that that surge output one is for electric motors that take a lot of drain and electric motors that start under load, such as freezers, fridges, air compressors, um, air conditioners, and um, one other thing that I can't think of right now, um, water pumps. So I'll put in a little bit about that and the surge voltage thing, uh, surge wattage that you may need to read about um, in regards to those several devices in the description because I keep running out of time every time I explain all this um, and overshoot me 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, 
with your inverter, you're looking at your constant voltage, your R2, with your uh, generator. Um, inverters aren't 100% efficient. Solar panels to battery charging is definitely not 100% efficient. It's nowhere near, um, especially, you know, when the sun starts not getting too bright because it's overcast. Don't always just assume she's just going to run it, you know, always double do it. Uh, also, you can't run your battery. Well, you can, but you're not supposed to run it below half and preferably not supposed to run it below a third of its capacity. So your 100 amp hour battery should only have 33 amp hours drawn out of it, but you can draw it 50 amp hours. At that point it hits 50 amp hours, your inverter air or low volt disconnect 12 volt box will pull the plug on you. Um, no, it's nice to not run it below 33%, but the better technology ones um, and the actual disconnect of your inverter and your low voltage disconnect box um, will be 50% um, of its, you know, amp hours. Considering that you've had a nice gentle draw, not a hell of a, not trying to crank some massive lemon device off of it uh, that it's probably not capable of doing. Uh, your inverters are modified uh, pure sine wave. 80% or better. With your real good ones, you might even be hitting like 93, 95%. Your cheapo Chinese, you're, you're 80 to 90%. Your modified sine wave is worse. I don't know how much worse. Um, I may also put that in the description when I go and have a look at my little modified sine wave one that I left at my parents' place. Um, and yeah, uh, quite simply, Your, the bigger the inverter is, the more efficient it is, um, and the bigger it is, it has a larger standby current. They have something like 0.4 of a watt, uh, through to the big ones, may, uh, 0.4 of an amp rather, through to the big ones may even take two amps, non-stop current draw as standby. So you lose a bit there as well, um, not just in your efficiency of your conversion from your 12 or 24 to mains, uh, but also the fact that you've got a standby um, current that's constantly being drawn, even when you aren't using anything. Of course, needless to say, the more expensive the inverter, the less that draw is. Um, but, you know, I've seen big uh, ones that have got 1.2 amp constant draw, and there's probably real big ones um, that I haven't had a good look at that, you know, use two amps, maybe even more, but, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that'll give you an idea, but you'll get to know, um, what you can do and what you can't do. Oh yeah, fancy pants battery manufacturers may say you can discharge below 50% of a battery's capacity. Don't try. You're just murdering it. It doesn't matter how fancy the brand is, it's not good for it really. Um, and look, seriously, if you drop it below 50%, if you try and keep drawing it below 10 uh, volts, you're just absolutely murdering it. So, yeah, uh, give that a miss.